Hi there grade 10s, welcome to the final lesson in our series on the atom. In today's lesson we will apply your knowledge of the atom to understand how atoms form ions. Let's first cross over to Diyasha to review what we've learnt about the model of the atom so far. So far, we have traced the development of the atomic model from early Greek philosophy through the ages till we finally reached the quantum mechanical model of the atom. It seems that many different pieces of a giant puzzle are starting to fit together. In this lesson, we add one more key concept to show how the development of the atomic model is linked to the periodic table of the elements. Do you remember that the periodic table was originally designed by Dmitry Mendeleev? He showed how the elements can be arranged in groups with similar properties. He noticed that the chemical and physical properties of elements follow a pattern that is repeated in a regular or periodic way. He called this idea the periodic law and his table of elements was called the periodic table. If you look closely at the periodic table, you will see that there are many interesting repeating patterns. In this lesson, we are going to show how some of these patterns are linked to the atomic model. We will also look at how the neutrality of the atom changes when we remove an electron from an atom and how to determine the change after electrons are added or removed from the atom. First, we will determine what the change on the ion is when an electron is removed. In order to do this, you need to recall what you know about the atomic number. The atomic number of an element tells you how many protons are found in the nucleus of the atom and the number of electrons that orbit the nucleus in a neutral atom. When an atom is electrically neutral, the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. In this example, lithium has three protons in the nucleus since its atomic number is three and, as you can see, it has three electrons orbiting the nucleus. Now, the valence electron can be removed and a positive ion will form. What will the charge be on this lithium ion? Once the electron is removed, the lithium ion has three protons, which are positively charged. It now has only two electrons orbiting the nucleus. Plus 3 minus 2 is plus 1. So it has one more positive proton and has a charge of plus 1. We write it as lithium subscript plus. Now look at the beryllium atom. It has four protons and four electrons in a neutral atom. It has two valence electrons. What would the charge be on a beryllium ion if the two valence electrons are removed? The charge on the beryllium ion would be plus 2 and we write it as beryllium 2 plus. Notice that the atoms in group 1 lose a valence electron to form a 1 plus ion. Atoms in group 2 lose both valence electrons to form a plus 2 ion. In some cases an atom gains an electron to form a negative ion. For example the fluorine atom, which has 9 protons and 9 electrons, can gain an electron. The ion now has one more negative charge than positive charges. So what will its charge be? Well, plus 9 minus 10 is minus 1. The charge on the ion will therefore be negative 1. And we write this as F subscript minus. If an atom has up to four valence electrons, it can lose these electrons to form a positive ion. If it has five to seven valence electrons, it can gain electrons to make a negative ion. Can you work out which groups in the periodic table are likely to form positive ions and which are likely to form negative ions? Atoms in groups one to four can form positive ions. Groups five, six and seven can form negative ions. Let's find out one last thing about the atom. In this final lesson on the atom, we have focused on how electrons are held around the nucleus. Although we have come a long way in developing the model of the atom, there is still more to discover. Chemists have focused on the arrangement of the electrons, but physicists have worked on the models to describe the nucleus. 
Their work led directly to one of the most important discoveries of the 20th century, nuclear power. Although the dropping of the atomic bomb ended the Second World War, this brought about the beginning of the nuclear age. Today, South African scientists are turning their attention towards the stars. Using a range of different telescopes, they are looking back to the birth of our universe. They will be focusing on galaxies far away where neither size nor the amount of energy is limited. Together, the nuclear physicists and astronomers can watch to see how galaxies millions of light years away from us were born in a spectacular release of energy that signals the creation of matter. Using this new data, the nuclear physicists will go on to build new models of the atom until the puzzle is complete. I trust that you have enjoyed this series on the atom and now have a better understanding of how our knowledge of the atom has changed. Don't forget to complete the task video on the atom. Remember to check out the Mindset website www.mindset.ca.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.